Dean Cruz and we've been here listening and learning a lot about his earlier days and his life. Now tell us, you know, you're the guy that started the whole classic car auction business, which has turned into a huge business in this world. Tell us kind of how that all started. Well, uh, the Chamber of Commerce had the ACD reunion here every year. Now the ACD stands for Auburn Corps Duesenberg. Those are cars that were built in Auburn, Indiana. And uh, so they had this reunion. Every year and they bring in 70 to 120 cars and the Chamber of Commerce tried to take care of them and entertain them. And they always ended up losing 2,500 to $3,500. Mm -hmm. And the Auburn Chamber didn't have much money. So they said, we got to figure out a thing to raise money, maybe have an auction. So uh, Delmar Johnson and uh, uh, John Martin Smith were the two guys kind of represent the chamber and they said, well, get a hold of somebody and let's maybe have an auction, sell some things to these people. So we had an auction out here at the country club and they said, or you had a meeting at country club. Oh, yeah, yeah, I said auction. I'm That's sorry. all right. But you had a meeting. And <laughs> had a meeting there sorry. and uh, they said, why don't you go around the merchants and get donations. And we'll sell it to these people and they can help support their own deal, raise some money. Not a bad idea. Mm -hmm. And we talked for a while. My dad said, well, uh, Russell, Cruz said, why don't we sell some cars? Because they always have cars with for sale signs on them. Mm -hmm. And they talked a little bit and they said, you know, you guys are in the auction business or not. You just, if you want a car auction, do it. And you think you can get us our 3,500 instead of selling merchandise, go ahead and do it. Mm -hmm. So we, we decided that we needed a expert in cars. So we got a guy by the name of Leo Gephardt. He was our partner for the first 10 or 12 years. He, he was okay, Leo was good. And uh, he'd get, get a little tipsy once in a while, but he, he, was, he knew cars. Mm -hmm. And so uh, we had our first sale. It was scheduled out here at the uh, uh, side of Auburn where the Dairy Queen is. That was all a field. And we put up tents. And it was raining, <laughs> raining that day of the auction, but we got 80 cars. Okay. And it was raining, and I left home, you know, like maybe 30 minutes before. I didn't want to sit out in the rain, and Russell had a group of girls under a little small tent that was checking people in and the, the Chamber of Commerce was charging admission. Okay. And they put, put steel fence posts around our auction site and took a rope and looped one rope all the way around. Okay. okay? So uh, we uh, had, to, had to sail and I'm coming from home. I live south of town about six miles and my son Mitchell was about six, seven, eight years old then and he was riding with me in the car. And we come up this back road, this is what they call the cemetery road to Auburn, and there was traffic. We couldn't go. It was bumps, bumps just sat in. So I said, well, let's go over and try 427. So we went over and tried 427, traffic, we couldn't go. So then we said, well, we'll go 69. It had just been built. We went over to 69, got on 69, and there was cars. We couldn't go anywhere. I said, Mitchell, these people are all going to this dad blame auction. They have to be. There's nothing else in Auburn, even if somebody was in a 10 car crash, it wouldn't be this bad. They have to be coming to this crazy auction. Mm -hmm. So I just got out on the berm at I-69 and drove, and people gave me the finger, blowing the horns and cussing me out. And I drove, because I knew if it was like this, Russell would be in terrible trouble. So I drove all the way up and got up to the, uh, where the exit was and I went on the grass and got around the signs and got over there to the site. They were all going to the auction. It was unbelievable. They bought all the food in the town of Auburn. Every restaurant was bought out. All the grocery stores had everything sold that you could eat. And they just, I mean, this this descended on our, on our place. And there were helicopters up above, NBC News from Chicago, CBS, from Detroit, they all were here, big shots were flying in and it was the most unbelievable thing i ever seen. So we go in there and the chambers trying to collect their 3,500 and they got these fence posts and the rope is only like about three feet off the ground or four at the most mm -hmm. and people just descended like water <laughs> rushing over a dam. They just <laughs> stepped over the ropes and came in. They still collected 7,800. Really? <laughs> charging a dollar each. Oh, Only man. charging a dollar a piece, they collected 7,800. So they were so happy. And of course, we were happy. We uh, we made national news. We had a guy by the name of Kaufman up in Wisconsin, brought a Duesenberg there. And uh, no car had ever sold for over like 
20, $25,000 and we actually had 71,000 bid on his Duesenberg and he refused the price. And so that was on national news. And this was about what? 1971. 71. Wow. And it was on NBC, CBS, ABC, all national news. National, they had helicopter shots. This crowd, thousands descended on Auburn. And a crazy fool, two fools met. One got an offer of 71000 for his car, and the other one turned it down. And, and he said, there's two fools met. And that was a great story. And from then on, our phone ran off the hooks from all over the country. People said, can you come here and help us raise money for our town? Can you do this? Can you do that? We were off and running. We had so many leads of people wanting to have auctions, we couldn't even run them down. Wow, wow. So then the next year, of course, the Auburn Court Duesenberg Festival had more money than they ever knew what to do with. That's right. Yeah. Um, probably more notoriety than they ever knew what to do with. Yeah. Um, so the next year, you guys rented the high school. That's right, the high school so, football field. Okay, it was in the football field. Yeah, because we needed the stadium. Okay. And with the seats. Okay. And uh, so we were out there on the football field and uh, filled that place up. And again, their gate was like 10, 12,000. And it kept growing and growing and growing. And it finally got about five years later or six, it got to the point that the uh, chamber couldn't get people to run all the gates and take care of all the stuff. They said, we can't do all this. Mm -hmm. we, we, we're not organized to do that. Mm -hmm. We're a benevolent organization. So we made a deal with them. Uh, I believe the number was 25,000. We'll give you 25,000 a year mm -hmm. and you just furnish the car drivers. Okay. And they said, boy, that's good. We'll do that. So we did that for a long time. Well, and I remember even being in school because this was, you know, my school. I went to DeKalb. I mean, it was the biggest buzz in town whenever it was time for the auction. And you guys used to actually tear out part of the doorway of the gymnasium yeah. and bring the cars in the gym yeah. and have them on turntables. And people yeah. would sit in the bleachers yeah, and you'd have that seating place down there. Yeah. And the whole school, we couldn't go to school till the auction was over in yeah. the fall because, right. because it was the whole school was involved. That's and you right. guys... I mean, you hired every yep. school agency there That's was, right. every sports yep. team, yeah. every band. Um, yep. Tell us about that. Well, we had to get people to park cars because they were in, they were lined up for miles. Mm -hmm. So we got rented farmers' fields and stuff, and got them mowed and got people parking. We went to the gym because it rained a couple of times and it was a mess. So we wanted to get the cars are like little diamonds and wanted to get them in the dry. So, anyways, um, we had the car in there. We had. The school would help us uh, park cars and they would uh, collect the money and they did a lot of things for us because we had to find somebody to furnish two or three hundred people. <laughs> the school was perfect. We were there and the kids yeah. do everything. Yeah. And Because uh, every club in school, whether it was athletics or whether it was the, the what, Spanish club or the band or any of them, they all, everybody got a job. So we That's all right. made yeah. money for our organizations in the school. It and did. it was some pretty big money too. That's I mean, right. And then the food vendors. Yeah. We, we got like 20 or 30 food vendors. We had organizations that made their whole year's budget selling hamburgers or hot dogs yeah. or whatever they sold. Some sold sloppy joes and yeah. it was really interesting. It was a festival. Oh yeah, it was, yeah. It was huge. Yeah. So that was uh, we'd have the band play before we started yeah. and play the national anthem and mm -hmm. it, we really put a little jazz to it. Oh, yeah. good. Put a cherry on top of the Sunday. 